sometimes our perceptions of what we think happened during the course of a firefight, especially in a game like Escape from Tarkov, where in a lot of cases every bullet matters most, end up being a little bit skewed. We think we end up seeing things go a certain way, believe beyond a shadow of a doubt, even if we end up looking at our own replays sometimes, we think a bullet or an interaction between two people should have gone a certain way, and in a lot of instances, believe that the game is to blame. I will say that in an awful lot of circumstances, that is absolutely true. I ended up having a conversation with Trey today. He sent me a DM. It really started off like this. I play this game a lot, but I don't look at details or numbers because I'm dumb. If you shoot someone with M61 twice in the chest from 30 meters away, with no arm pen, etc., and they have a gazelle, what are the odds that they live? Like zero. It's like a 99% punch through on the second shot, plus the blunt damage. Did you wall bang them? I don't think so, but maybe. It's like the second one did nothing? Hang on, let me watch this. One second. I think you only hit him once before he went prone, and the other shots look like the air was warping for close shots. Now, what I was responding to in this circumstance was a clip that he sent me from the tournament that was held today for evasion.gg. Right now, evasion is in the midst of its, I guess, pool rounds for their solo tournament, where a winner is going to be decided on Sunday. Now, in this particular interaction that Trey linked me was a fight between him and Razzle, where he believes that, beyond a shadow of a doubt, he shot Razzle in the chest twice with a gazelle using M61 out of an RFB. And to him, he feels as though two hits to the chest should have dropped him. And I agree. Absolutely. There's also a second interaction that he ends up mentioning, where he swears that he too shot someone in the chest and they did not drop as early as he figured they should have through a Gen 4 HMK, thinking that there must be some type of hit registration bug. So naturally, I said, well, let me look into it. So I took it into the lab. Now, before I show you the analysis of what I have for him, which, by the way, he asked me to do, and I also have full permission from him to be able to share all of this with you, and all of the results that I'm going to show you are things that I've already discussed with him, and he completely agrees with. I want to show you the clips in real time. We'll slow them down a little bit, and then I'll show you shot by shot. There's also some interesting things that seem to have happened here, and it also further illustrates a larger issue with how this game is currently designed that I want to go into a little bit. But first, let's look at the clips. This first clip will be from Razzle's perspective. And now the clip from Trey. Now, I don't know if you heard that necessarily. I know that the audio is a little bit low. Trey actually ends up kind of muttering, how is he alive? And on first glance, I think you have to kind of agree. If you were watching this from a live stream, you'd be like, man, it looks like he hit the chest like three or four times, right? So those are the first two clips between him and Razzle. Let me show you this last clip where he's on shoreline and well, I'll just show you. Now on the onset, those clips look like pretty solid shots. If it were me watching this again in a live stream, that last clip, especially, I count two, three, maybe even four chest hits from the side as he was running. But I don't like to take things at, like, the 60 FPS reference. So, like I said, I wanted to take this into the lab. So, like I said, rather than trusting those clips, I wanted to take this to the lab and see where the shots actually ended up. And the lab is simply some recording software where we trimmed down the speed of these frames to about 2%. Now, you can see here... What I ended up having to do was actually doctor this a little bit so that the waveform actually matched the animation. So that way we have the boom. Right? And we're just looking for that frame where we see the recoil kick because that's where the shot ends up fired from. Now we do have to take a couple of things into consideration. One, Trey in this case is using an RFB. They are not the most reliable in terms of their accuracy. However, both of these interactions are pretty close. So any amount of... I guess, deviation that's going to come from an accuracy stat 
really isn't going to matter this close up. Secondly, there is also height over bore to consider. The RFB with what appears to be a Voodoo sitting on top of the RFB is going to have a little bit of travel. With Trey pulling a leaner the way that he is, there is going to be a little bit of a skewed shot here. But again, based on the distance, assuming that he has a 50 meter zero, which I believe he does, it should not be that different. But anyway, let's look at these shots. So if we slow this down, we have boom, one, two, three, four, five. Those are the five shots that Trey took. Now again, on Razzle's screen, he ends up taking one hit from shot two. That's the one that hit him in the chest. And it didn't do enough damage to kill him, which means that the M61 round didn't fragment. It also means that even though it penetrated, there was enough damage scrubbed off from the armor to keep him from dying. He was close, but he was still alive. And that's the really important thing. So if we take a closer look at this, shot one is fired from right here, just off of his face. So if we zoom in, which I can do pretty easily, if we zoom in, we can see here's shot one, the reticle centered, if anything, the round would be just in front of him when he fired based on how close of a proximity he is. It would even be shot a little bit high because this round is zeroed for M80, which means that the M61 round is going to come out a little bit above. So it's probably really zeroed somewhere up around in here. So he was slightly above and to the right of his head. The second round is right here. Again, we're going to be above and to the right. So in this case, it probably ended up shooting straight through his backpack. Again, just, just barely off of his head. Round three comes in at stomach height. However, again, M61 having a faster travel speed than that of M80 by quite a bit, ends up zipping a little bit high and probably ends up hitting him somewhere in the sternum, high chest, maybe somewhere around like uh, the clavicle area, something around those lines. So even though shot two wasn't actually the one that connected, I believe that shot three, I believe this one is the one that actually ended up hitting him. Which brings us then to shot four, which is here. And again, if we're going a little bit up and to the right, it's probably just above his arm, maybe somewhere here around his neck. And Trey's a fantastic player. This should have hit. However, it didn't, probably again because of the speed of M61 being a bit high. And then the very last one, and this is the one that I find to be the most suspect, is shot five. Bang. Right here. The most interesting thing about shot five is this. Do you see this right here? This little mark? That little white dot? What happens in this scenario is this round is fired from right here. It should have, should have hit and gone through these pallets. You can't really tell what those are. Those are wooden pallets that are sitting stacked up. And Trey ends up hitting the very, very corner of these pallets, probably to the high side. Now, this probably would have hit Razzle in the stomach had the pallet not been there. But the pallet does something funny. And there's also an error. There's an issue with Tarkov right now where when you try to wall bang people or shoot through surfaces, those surfaces scrub off an absolute ton of damage. They aren't penetrating the way that they're supposed to. This round should have cut straight through this pallet and hit him in the stomach, but it didn't. Instead, what happens is the pallet refracts that round and it ricochets off of the pallet and hits the connex to the left instead of hitting him. So in my opinion, Razzle got extremely lucky. In this case, I don't see Tarkov having been the culprit here. In this case, what it appears to be is not compensating for M61 ammo. Now, unfortunately, Trey goes on to lose that interaction, and we go to the next round or rounds. Now, the next clip that I want to show you, again, is Trey located on Shoreline, and we're going to slow this down and take a real good look at how this ended up going. Because remember, in Trey's opinion, and on the onset when we're watching this in 60 FPS, it looks like this person got hit in the chest three, maybe even four times. So just so that we understand the setup, Trey hears the person that he's targeting behind this big wooden shed. And the person decides that he's going to jump up on top of the fence, like so. He ends up crouching down to take a look around. Trey waits for him to inch his way forward before coming down off of the fence and waits for him to bring his head into view. As he brings his head into view, Trey decides to ready up for a shot. But unfortunately, our target stands up as the shot is fired. And Trey ends up hitting him in his left arm, right in the forearm. 
more or less at the exact same time the tray ends up clicking his mouse, our target jumps in the air forward. And you can hear him cry out in pain when he gets hit. There's the uh. Then we have our second shot, which goes off right here. And I believe that BSG ended up crediting him with a leg hit. Because we do end up seeing like a little bit of pink mist that shows up just below his legs. Boom. There's a little bit of pink mist right here. From here, Trey fires a third round. And to Trey's credit, he has fantastic target tracking. But this shot could have gone one of two ways. It either hit him in the stomach or it went high and hit him in the chest. Now again, he's firing M61. My assumption is it should have hit him in the ribs. So I'm going to credit this one with a chest shot, but things are still a little bit weird. And he cries out in pain when he's hit. The next shot here goes wide right, ends up hitting the barn to the right. And then we have the next shot here. Boom. To me, this is a leg hit. I believe this one hit him in his left leg and probably blacked the leg out. We don't end up hearing him actually cry. Then we have the next shot here, and I believe this one again ended up either being a leg hit to the right leg, it went high and hit him in the left arm, or it possibly went underneath and missed. I'm not really sure. But if it was a hit, it was a hit on his left arm. Then Trey repositions. Fires this round here. Being M61, being what it is, as the player is moving against him, right? Because we have him moving from right to left. Boom. In Trey's mind, as he's carrying the mouse across, this, to me and to him, look like a head hit. But if you notice, this is the center of the reticle right here. Because he's leaning to the right, it's going to go up and to the right. So in all reality, this shot probably went between his shoulder and his ear and just split this section right here, this little L, and went right on by, never even touched him. Then we have our next shot. This one most likely ended up hitting him in his right leg as he ran up toward this pole. And we hear him cry out in pain. As he's jumping, Trey fires another one, but this one just goes into the grass. He goes to make another follow-up. This one's behind him, underneath his butt cheek. Boop. Missed. This next one, from what I can gather, just hits the concrete here next to him, or possibly even just goes by and cuts through his backpack. He tries to recompensate for all of the, uh, the misses that he just had. Aims toward the front of him as he's peeking out. Fires wide left, puts a round right in front of his hands. And then finally, this shot here hits him in the stomach. He cries out. Fires again. Misses in the front. And then our final killing round. Boom. Hits him in the stomach again. And it finally folds him over. In the course of the conversation that I was having with Trey about these clips especially, he ended up mentioning that partway through the tournament, he switched to M62 and it felt better. Which then goes to further illustrate why my belief in M61 flying higher out of the RFB versus that of M62 or M80, which the gun is zeroed for, makes sense. In a few of these instances, especially in this case of fighting Razzle, had he been using M62... I genuinely believe that Razzle would have lost that interaction because it looked to me like Trey was pretty well on. And had the M61 round not been the faster round traveling higher and just missing these target shots by a hairline, like an RCH really, Trey probably would have and should have won those. The second point here is if this first piece of this rings true, and I think it does, the second point here is that BSG, again, needs to really do something about how these guns get zeroed. Because for people like Trey, that are incredibly accurate with the way that they play the game, that can be incredibly frustrating. 
especially if you aren't, I guess, of mind enough, present mind enough to be able to remind yourself, oh, I have to aim a little bit lower because of M61 instead of just putting the reticle on the target and left clicking. I guess if there's an overarching main idea that I could leave with everyone from a video like this one is that analyzing your own gameplay makes a lot of sense. If you're frustrated by how things look on the surface, go back and take a serious look at how you believe those interactions went. Record your own gameplay and take a serious look at how those things played out. Sometimes you can end up surprising yourself with how they ended up actually going versus what it looked like when you were playing this game at 60, 75, 100 FPS. And failing that, if you believe that there was a sus interaction, like these kind of tournament interactions or something that you would like me to analyze, I actually really enjoy making this kind of content. So feel free to DM me on Twitter with something that you've got. And as long as it's not something weird like a cheater flying through the air or something that makes it look completely obvious, I'll be more than happy to analyze whatever plays that you're making and uh, we'll turn it into some kind of content. Okay, thanks for coming and checking out this one, boys. And we'll see you in the next one. Peace.